Hey guys, Simcolor here, and today we'll be carrying on with the TikTok clone series, and in this video we'll learn how we can save a post to Firestore database and to storage, because we have to save the video in Firebase storage, and we have to save all of the data that comes with it to Firestore. So this will be a really simple lesson, but it is really important as we'll learn some really critical components of Firebase. Now that we have our video recorded, we are able to just pick up on how to save it to the database and to store it. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then please do leave it a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any single video in the future. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, I deployed the application and it is already running in the emulator. This is where we left off in the previous lesson. So we are able to pick images from our gallery, which because we are using an emulator is what I'm going to use uh, just for this, because you are not able to record while using an emulator. So uh, that's just um, a, an issue with Expo, not an issue, a limitation with Expo that they say in the, their documentation. So let's start off by going into source, going into screens and add a new folder. Let's call it save post. Then we are going to add, as we always do, an index.js and a styles.js. So styles.js, just like that. Now going into index.js, we are going to do RNF uh, using the package, the extension from VS Code that we are used to using uh, in order to create the boilerplate code for a functional component. Then uh, this will be called, uh, this functional component will be called save post screen. Okay, save that. Then we are going to go into our navigation and add it to main. This is because this screen, this safe post screen, won't appear within our navigator that contains the bottom uh, bar uh, tab navigation. We are going to simply create a new screen which will appear on top of everything as it is a standalone page which should get its standalone screen. So for this we are going to come in here in the navigator in the main route and we are going to first of all create two empty tags, or better yet, one empty tag, which will engulf the, all of the stack screens from the logged in user. So we are going to double up on the stack screen that we have in here, the home one, and we are going to say save post. This will be the name of it. And in here, we will simply call up save post screen. Header shown will be false yet again. Okay, so now that we have it and make sure that the imports are the correct one, so uh, that to make sure that VS Code doesn't simply import it from the wrong place. So uh, now that we have our safe post created, we are able to actually start writing some code to pass along the information from the camera uh, screen to our safe post screen. So we are going to do this right now and I'm going to close up on the index main as it isn't needed anymore. And we are going to go into camera. In here, I'm going to do const navigation right up top below this focus, and we are going to use another hook in here. In this case, we are going to use the use navigation hook. This use navigation, uh, which comes from React Navigation Native, is really useful as it allows you to use the, the stack navigation without having to pass along the props from one component to the next. So by uh, simply calling it in here, we don't have to come in here and do navigation and pass along uh, whichever prop from the navigation uh, exists within the home navigation. Uh, we can simply use the navigation and it will use the existing navi stack navigation that uh, this component can see. Okay, so now that we have this, we are able to go into the to-dos that we I left off in here. So this is for when the video starts re stops recording. Uh, however, I'm not going to bother with this at the moment as we are unable to test it as we are using an emulator, but I'm going to go into the pick from gallery, which in this case we are able to test. So let's do, and let's try to make it a bit clearer. So navigation.navigate, 
And now we pass along the name of the, the, the screen that we want to go to, the route that we want to go to, which in this case is save post. I believe that's what I called it, but just make sure, let's come in here and yeah, it is save post. So save post like so. And then we want to pass along some parameters to this route so that uh, the user is actually able to receive it in another component. In this case, it will be source and this will be where our video will live. So results.uri. And this will give us the, the source of the video, the URI of the video, which is basically the same thing as an URL, but much more broader uh, so that it doesn't just involve an HTTP uh, link uh, in this case. Okay, and now that we have uh, and are passing around some elements to our save post, let's actually receive them. And for this, I'm going to call up props in here and uh, simply console log props dot routes dot params dot source and uh, this will give us the, the the uri that we passed along in the previous component so let's give it a try and see if it actually prints and for this i'm going to open up the terminal remove this one come in here and we see that we get the uri for the file that we picked so it is working nicely let's move on to the next part which is actually to learn how we can uh, design the safe page, which won't be exactly the same as TikTok. It is, is going to be much simpler, but yeah, it will give us, you some guidelines on how to structure it. But before that, one easy thing that we can do is simply to grab this navigation navigate, as we know it works, and simply paste it in here. However, instead of result.uri, it will be simply source, as we already deconstructed the data in the, that exists within the data variable. And we can remove the to-do as uh, it is working as it should. So yeah, let's move on to styling out the save post screen. Okay, so here we are in the save post screen. And first of all, let's move on into the save post screen uh, in order to make it easier to see. The first thing that I'm going to do is simply to remove this console log as it isn't needed anymore. We know it works. Uh, and I'm going to go into the styles.js, go into another styles.js, for example, the one in the camera, and simply paste whatever is inside there in here, simply to get the boilerplate code from a style sheet. Okay, remember one thing, in React Native, there are no CSS files. We, what we have are styled objects. So this is why we are uh, placing the styles within a JS file. It isn't that common when it comes to web development, but in React Native, it is a necessity. Okay, so let's first of all, clear this up and start structuring out the project. So the first thing that I'm going to do is simply to give some styling to the main container, uh, which in this case, it will be styles and we have to import it. So import. styles from dot slash styles. By doing so, we are able to get the styles that we uh, have in our safe post uh, styles.gss, dot js, better yet. And in here, it will be simply container, save that. And now that we have this, and uh, if I wrote down subscribe to sim coder in here, it should appear or uh, it should be hidden uh, be, uh, behind the status bar. So let's give a margin top simply to, to see what's going on in there. So 50, something like that, and it appears awesome. So let's leave it ex like so for the time being. And in here, let's start handling the form. So let's create the view for it, uh, which will be the main parent of our form. And let's add a text input for the user to add a title to the video that um, the user wants to, to place. So text input, and this can be a self-closing tag, so let's do it like so as it looks much better. Then we are able to actually start uh, writing in some code. In this case, I'm going to add a placeholder, which in this case will be describe your videos. Save that and the text input appears in there. Uh, but I want to add some styling to it and I want to add some constraints to it. The first thing that I want to do is to make it multi-line. 
so that the user can write longer descriptions and uh, the text doesn't just continue indefinitely. Uh, I want the, the text, whenever uh, it reaches the end of the screen, to go into a new line. So this allows you to do that. And I want to add a max length. Just make sure that the, the user doesn't write a big composition in here and I don't want uh, anyone to write a book <laughs> within the descriptions of the post. So I'm going to set the max length to 150. This will allow the user to write 150 characters. Okay, so that's done. Um, now what we can do is to actually try and style out this uh, text input. So I'm going to do it above everything else. Let's do style and styles dot input text. Okay, and now let's give some styling to this. Let's go on to our styles.js, do input text, open up curly brackets, and uh, let's actually start styling this out. So the first thing that I want to do is to add a simple padding vertical to make sure everything looks nice and tidy and a margin right. And you'll see why we need this in a second, because within TikTok, uh, the video displays on the right side of the description. So I want to give some space between the text input and the video which will appear in here. But uh, it still looks a bit off as it is uh, touching the borders on the left side. So what I'm going to do is to give a style to the form container. So let's come in here and do form container with a capital I C. Come back to the styles.js and do margin will be 20. And the flex direction, which is really important in this case, will be row. It is important because, as I've said, I want to display an image next to the, um, the text input that appears in here. One other thing that I'm going to do is to uh, make the background color completely white, as it is a bit grayish at the moment. And because we are using a margin, this gray bar will appear in here as the whole container gets pushed down. But I don't want that. I want the padding to exist so that only the contents gets pu get pushed down in this case. So padding top, and let's make it like 30, a bit less than that. Okay, that works. And now we are able to actually move on to the image uh, in order to display the, the source that we got from the previous uh, component. So in this case, it will be image, auto import it, really important to do that. Do a self-closing tag. And in here, we are going to do source equals to curly brackets, curly brackets, and pass along the URI of the media that we got from the previous component. So URI props dot route dot params dot source. Save that and any, nothing will show up as we don't, didn't give any styling to it. So uh, it will appear a bit off. So in this case, let's come in here and add the styling to it. So style, and let's, in this case, do styles.media preview. Okay, let's save that and grab the media preview name and move it to the styles.js. In, in here, we are going to define the aspect ratio of the, the video that we get. So in this case, it will be nine by 16. Save that and it will appear automatically. Then the background color. I'm going to set it to black just in case nothing shows up so that the user can see something uh, come out of it. And I'm going to define the width, which will be 60. And this will make the image a bit larger so that, to make it easier to see. Okay, and one other thing that we want to do is to push this image to the right side of the screen. And we want to do this by enlarging the description of the video. So in, uh, of the, the input text better yet in this case. And uh, we can do this by adding a flex one and this will push everything to the right side as uh, it will occupy the, the most amount of space that it can without uh, moving all of the components that are on the right side out of the screen. Okay, and in here I made a typo, describe your video, that works better. And there we go. We now have a really simple form, uh, which basically is just the description. Obviously, I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Uh, 
TikTok has some share buttons and things like that, but I don't want to worry about that at the moment as uh, it isn't um, the most interesting part about making a post. So the next part that we have to do is to create the buttons to actually interact with this post and decide if we want to post it or if we want to uh, simply cancel the action. So let's create yet another view, which in this case will be for the buttons, the buttons container better yet. So let's add a style to it. And in this case, it will be, as I said, styles.buttons.container. Save that, grab the buttons container, and do two points, open curly, curly brackets, and simply let's place flex direction row as TikTok has two buttons living side by side. So that's how we are going to go about it. Okay, save that. And now let's add the touchable opacity for the buttons. So touchable opacity, save that. Uh, these won't be a self-closing tag as we have to have children inside it to actually show something uh, UI uh, related. And let's simply come in here and do on press. And the first button that appears in TikTok is the go back or better yet cancel uh, action button. So let's do it right now. So on press, and it will be navigation dot go back. However, we don't have a navigation uh, constant in here yet, which is the same thing as we did previously. And in order to create it, let's do const navigation equals to use navigation. This hook, again, from React Navigation, which will help you to use the stack without having to pass along the props from component to component. Okay, save that, and let's uh, simply come back in here, and let's add the styling to it. So style, styles.cancel button. Let's grab this, go back into our styles.js, two points, open curly brackets, and uh, let's add, before actually adding some styles, some components inside of this button to make it more clear when we are actually styling it. So we are going to add an icon, first of all, so feather, and it gave an error because it can't find the variable for some reason, so let's import it manually. So import brackets, curly brackets, but yet feather from Expo ve uh, vector icons, better yet. Let's go and pick a video, anyone. And in here, we are going to give the name, which in case will be X, that's the name of the icon that we'll use. And let's give a size, which will be 24. And let's give the color, which in this case will simply be black. Save that, and the X appears in here. It doesn't look all that great, it is pushed to the side completely out of context, but uh, it will in a second when once we actually start uh, giving some style to the button. But before that, let's add the text, auto import it, and let's say it is cancel. Okay, and in here we are actually also going to give a style. So let's add styles dot cancel button text. Save that. And now let's actually start giving some style to this button. So let's first of all add the cancel button text. Save that. Okay. And first of all, let's start giving some styling to this cancel button style, as it is the most important and relevant to make this button actually look a bit better than it does right now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to align items to the center, just make sure everything will look better than it does right now. Then I'm going to add a flex one, uh, and by adding this flex one, when we add the next button to the same row, it will push to the get pushed to the left and the other button gets pushed to the right. Then we are going to add a border color, and this has to be in a new line, so border color, and let's try with a light gray, like so. 
Then let's add the border width. And it can be one, really simple. Let's add the flex direction to make sure that the, the icon appears to the left of the text, like so. And we are also able to add some padding uh, vertical, for example, to make sure that the button is a bit bigger than it is right now. So padding horizontal, let's do 20, like so. And it, it looks great already. And But before carrying on, let's do justify content to make sure everything is centered nicely within the button. And next, let's simply do a border radius. Just make the, but the buttons a bit rounder than they are uh, by default. Let's try with six, that's a bit too much. And let's try with four and it looks good. It is a bit hard to see as uh, it is touching the borders, but yeah, that should be enough. So one thing that I'm going to do is in the buttons container, a bit uh, up top, I'm going to add a margin horizontal of 20 or something like that. Just again, to make sure the buttons don't touch the edges. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to double up on the button and let's see how it looks. Okay, so they are created and uh, they are connected, which we'll handle in a second. However, we want to push the buttons to the bottom uh, before every anything else. So let's come in here and do view. And let's use a simple trick to get items pushed down below. So let's add the styles for it. And I'm going to call it styles.spacer. This spacer will simply contain a flex of one. And you'll see what happens when we do that. So flex one, save that. And as you can see, because we added an empty view, which basically has all of the height that it can occupy without moving elements out of the screen, then the buttons get pushed down below, which is awesome and exactly what we need. Then in the buttons container, I'm going to give a margin vertical of 20. And it looks good. Uh, one optimization that we can do in here is simply to, instead of having a margin vertical and a margin horizontal having exactly the same values, you can have just one margin. Okay, so one thing that we can do right now is to give some space between both buttons. And for this, I'm going to come in here and do margin right of 10. Let's do it like so. Okay, and it looks awesome. Uh, so it is exactly what we need. Uh, the next part that we'll do is to actually handle the post button, which is slightly different. So let's do post button and come in here and double up on the cancel button. However, uh, we'll change some of the parameters that appear in here. So one of the first thing that we have to do is change the, the name of the icon. So we'll change it to corner left up and it appears like it is an upload sign. Uh, there isn't one exactly like one, the one that TikTok uses. So we will have to go with this one. And for the text, it will be post. There we go. Now we have the two buttons doing two different things. However, we didn't still style out the cancel button text, so that's what we are going to do right now before handling the post button. And this is really simple. So let's do it by doing sim a simple font weight, uh, setting it to bold to make sure it pops up a bit more. Then color, let's do it with black. Save that. And the font size, Let's set it to 16, so a bit larger so that it is easier to see. And uh, there we go, we have the text for the cancel. However, I'm going to add a margin left, just make sure that the text doesn't touch the icon as much. So margin left 10, that's too much. Let's try with five. Okay, that looks better. So let's move on to the post button. In the post button, what will be changed is basically that we don't have a border color, we don't have a border width, but we do have a background color. So background color will be asterisk FF4040. And this is a shade of red, a pinkish red. So that's what we are going to go with. And we have to add a 
post button text. As it is slightly different, yet again, let's add a comma there, because in here the text will be white and not black, but we have to change the styles for it. So like so, and the icon will again also be white. There we go. Now that we have our uh, screen design done, we have to actually learn how we can save the post and uh, do all of that. One of the things that we can test right now is the go back action. And as you can see, the cancel is doing that. Obviously, the post is also doing that. So that's what we are going to change next. Uh, but before carrying on with that, what we have to do is to save the state of the text inputs that the user has uh, placed within these text input components. So let's do on change text equal to curly brackets, open parentheses, text, arrow function, and now we are able to use state in order to keep track of this variable. So we are able to do this by doing use state, and we have to import it. So let's do use state and actually import it from React. And initial state doesn't exist yet, obviously. So let's replace it by an empty string, as it, this will be empty uh, the first time the user loads up the components. And let's say set description. And description will be the name of the variable. This will be the setter. And for that, we have to place it inside the on-change text, which gets called anytime the user change makes any change to uh, these uh, components. So there we go. We are now able to actually move on to the save post action um, we, using Redux, obviously. So that's something that's a bit tricky to do. So let's give it a look. OK, so let's crack on. And the first thing that we have to do is, first of all, we can collapse everything else. Um, and we are going to go into the actions of our Redux. And we are going to add one more file, which in this case, it will be called post.js, not ks. So let's fix that. js. And we are going to add it to the index.js. So post and export everything that comes from post. OK, so uh, by doing this, we'll separate the logic from uh, the other files as, um, well, that's simply good practices. OK, and uh, one thing that we can do is simply to go into the off.js and grab, for example, the login um, action so that we handle the boilerplate code and don't have to deal with it uh, in here. So this function will be called create post. For now, let's leave it as empty and let's simply clean up everything that comes inside here. OK, save that. Uh, we'll also be needing some other imports from the action. So let's come in here and grab them. So we'll need the Firebase imports along with the Firebase auth. However, we'll also need from Firebase, so fire. So let's delete this, Firebase slash Firestore. Save that. Now, the first thing that we have to do is to learn how we can save media to Firebase storage. And uh, for this, yet again, we are going to create another file. So we are going to call it random, which will contain all of the utility functions that don't belong anywhere else. So this simply helps in organizing the code. One more time, we are going to grab this function and we can actually grab everything else. So instead of Firebase auth, for the time being, we are going to simply use Firebase storage. As this function will be called uh, save media to storage. And it will be responsible just for that. And when it comes to the, um, the parameters that we have to pass along, well, we have to pass along the media, in this case, the URI of the, the video that we want to, to move to Firebase storage or the image, it doesn't matter, and the path which the image will have within Firebase storage. As you might remember from Firebase storage, and let's come in here um, and open up storage if you haven't already, as you have to decide where these uh, will be allocated within the world. So uh, in here, it works as a basic 
file uh, tree. So if we want to add, for example, posts, it will create a simple folder which can have all of the files that we want inside it. So it is really, really simple. For the time being, I'm going to delete this. Okay, so I'm going to remove this Firestore and there we go. We have our save media to storage function. It isn't working yet, but it will have to redo some work with it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to come in here and do save media to storage, which will receive the video and the path for the video within Firebase storage. And there is one thing to keep in mind while we do this. So first of all, let's start writing some code. So post forward slash, and in here it will receive the firebase.auth.currentuser.uid. And uh, this is the reason why we are doing this, to make everything as organized as possible. So we'll have the posts, or very add post, create that. Then inside this post, we'll have the user ID, uh, one, for example. And then inside here, we'll get all of the posts that exist uh, for that user, or better yet, all the posts that the user has made. So in here, we get to uh, a big problem, which is uh, we can simply save, uh, for example, the file name th that we get from the video. Uh, that's not good practice. However, uh, the best way of doing this is actually a bit more complicated and I don't want to deal with this, so I want to keep this as simple as possible. And because we have to have a unique ID for each post, I'm going to use a package to generate a random UID number uh, for us. In this case, it will be this package right here, UUID random. So grab npm i UUID random, let's go right back into our terminal, close, uh, clear that up, and I'm going to stop the expo service for server for the time being. Let's clear that and do npm i UUID random. Give it some time to install. Okay, so I've uh, installed it and I redeployed the Expo server. So we are now able to come in here and do import UUID from UUID random. And I made a typo there, so from like so. And this, uh, as it's stated in the description of the package, it will generate a unique ID. Obviously, uh, there's a chance, a slim chance, but a chance of the user creating two posts which will generate the same UUID. However, that's such a rare case. Uh, I mean, it will generate, I believe, like a 16 character string or something like that. So it is almost impossible that a single user will, will generate the same UUID. But you might say, well, and if two users generate the same UI, uh, the same ID for two different posts, well, that's no nothing to worry about, as they are in two separate folders, as it will be user ID one, and then we would have another user ID two. So even if inside of these folders um, existed two videos, in this case, with the same ID, then it isn't uh, anything to worry about as they live in separate paths within our Firebase storage. So let's carry on and actually start generating some videos. So in this case, it will be UUID, and this is a function, and it will generate automatically, so it is a synchronous function, which is awesome. And after we generate it, so then, we'll receive the res, and uh, in here we'll be able to actually populate the database with the data that we get, which will be the download URL for the post that the user has created. And before carrying on and saving an entry to Firestore, let's actually save the video to Firebase storage, as that's more uh, the top priority at the moment. For this, let's go into random, and again, it will receive the media and the path, so what we have to do is first of all define a file ref. So the file ref will be the place where uh, the video will be stored and as we have the path, but we must transform this path into an object that Firebase storage will actually comprehend. So in this case it would be Firebase storage dot ref and it will be a function dot child 
and let's pass along the path. Okay, now we have an object which Firebase Storage comprehends and we can actually use. So the first thing that we have to do is do a fetch of the media. Uh, and remember, this will be an URI, so it will basically download the video from the, de the user's device. Then we are going to receive a response from it. And we are going to return a response dot blob. And we are going to do what's called a promise chain. So in here, we first fetch the media, which is to say we download the media from the user's device. Then we transform or bury it. Then we get the response and we get the blob from it. A blob is a binary way of the format of displaying a video in this case, or a media or a file, whatever, uh, which is what Firestore takes. And that's the only way of getting it. Then we get the blob and we return the file ref dot put blob uh, so that we can actually uh, start getting ready to send the file over to Firebase storage. Then we get the task from which is the result of file ref put blob and with this task we get the download URL. So task dot ref dot get download URL save that, and then uh, we simply resolve the download URL that we get from here. So with this file put, it will automatically uh, send the file to Firebase Storage, and then once the file is finished sending, we are able to get the download URL from it. Then with the download URL, we are able to simply resolve this promise with the download URL which will be what we receive from here in this rest. So it can actually be called download URL and it will be easier if it was. So let's grab download URL and paste it in there. Okay, so now we are ready to actually save this to Firebase storage, uh, Firebase Firestore, better yet, as we already saved it to the storage. So let's do firebase.firestore.collection. And now we have to think about how we are going to structure out uh, the post collection within our database, and it will be really, really simple. So we'll have the collection post, and we'll simple, simply add this post to that collection. Now, uh, uh, in order to keep track of the current user's post and every other user's post, we'll simply have a creator field which will receive the current logged in user's ID. So. In here, let's open up curly brackets and do, first of all, the creator. And in, in this case, it will be Firebase auth current user UID. Then we'll have the download URL. Then we'll have the description, which doesn't exist yet within the parameter. So let's actually add it at this moment so that it is easier to, to figure out what we are doing. So first of all, description, then video, and that's it. That's all of the things that we need. So next up, we want to keep track of the likes count. And for that, we have to initialize it. So likes count to zero and comments count to zero. And we are also able to add the creation date of this specific post. So firebase.firestore.fields value dot server timestamp and this whenever it is received from by a firestore the firestore server it will convert it into the current timestamp of the server so it is really really awesome then we don't need to get any data from this promise we simply have to resolve so that this function actually finishes then we can also add a catch, for example. And in that case, it will reject it. OK, like so. And we can also add the catch to the save media uh, to storage function, because there's a, there's a chance of it failing. So it is also, also it is always nice to have this the sort of error handling so that we are sure that nothing goes wrong in the future. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so now let's go into the index of our uh, save post screen and actually handle saving it. So for this, we'll have a function called handle save post, which will be equal to an empty uh, set of params. And let's open up curly brackets. Okay, so uh, first of all, we want to keep track of uh, if um, a save request is running. So let's say request running and do set request running. So this will be false by default. And whenever we click on the post button, it will set it to true so that we can show, for example, a loading spinner or a loading screen of the post while the post is saving. Then we can come in here, grab the handle save post and simply change the function called on on press of the post button so that it is actually calling this function. So handle save post, that's it. Now we can do const dispatch, use dispatch. And let's first of all import use dispatch like so. And again, if you might remember, in Redux, you dispatch actions. So whenever we have a function within a Redux that we want to call, we have to call it within a dispatch. So in this case, it will be dispatch dot dispatch, and in between parentheses, we'll simply do save post, or better yet, create post. That's what it is called. Create post. Then we can pass along the parameters from this post. So First of all, which is description. Then, and let's see what we have to pass along next. It is just the video. So uh, for the video, I believe we have that call up in here. So this props route param source. And then we'll receive the response from it. If it is successful, obviously, if it isn't successful, then uh, it will return the catch. So whenever uh, the create post actually ends, we want to pop the stack all the way to the top, which means to go to the first screen that uh, React Navigation has within their uh, screen stack that the user has navigated in the meanwhile. So for this, we are going to do navigation.dispatch stack actions dot pop to top. And this will send the user to the first screen that uh, React Navigation has uh, any information on. So let's do it like so, and it can be like so, okay? And this stack action will come again from React Navigation. However, there's an error in here as it isn't able to find the Redux. So let's do it manually. So two points, two points, Redux, actions. And by saving this, it will work um, right now as it will be able to find it. One th cool thing that you can have is an alias for each and every single file type so that you only have to type uh, at Redux and it will automatically find the location of it. This is something that you can do with Babel and it is really, really useful. So let's try out uh, this function. But before that, let's actually add the loading screen in case the user is actually uploading the file. Uh, this will be really, really simple, so there's nothing to worry about in there. So, if request running, then we want to show a loading screen. And this is really simple to do. So, view, and we are going to use an activity indicator, which is a component from React Native, which is a, a loading sp spinner, and we can use it at will. So in this case, it will be a self-closing tag. Color will be equal to red or something like that. And the size, let's set it to large. Uh, one thing that you can do if you are uh, doing this type of conditional rendering and there's something that must happen in order for you to see what you are doing is to simply go into the state variable and trigger the, uh, the, the state variable that's controlling it manually. So by setting it to true in this case. And in this case, it should be returning. So let's, that's something that we have to do in order for this to actually show up. So let's save that. And there we go. The loading sp spinner appears, but uh, right at the top. So we have to fix this. And for that, we are going to add a style to it. So styles.uploading 
container. Grab this, go into the styles, upload in container, and in order to center everything within this view, what we have to do is first of all do flex one, then you'll align the items to center, and we'll justify the content to center. This will push everything to the middle of the screen. Okay, there we go. And that's where I'm going to leave it at. I'm not going to worry about anything. It doesn't look all that pretty, but well, it's enough for a loading screen. So let's set this flag to false yet again. Uh, and one thing that I'm going to do is on catch, simply set request running to false so that the user can uh, uh, upload it again or try to upload it again. Okay, so there we go. Now let's add a description. Subscribe to SimCoder as always. Let's hit post. Okay, so uh, I tried it and it was giving an error because we were using this patch in here and we, we don't need it as this is a simple utility file. So all the functions will be used throughout the application and they don't need to be Redux bound. One other thing that we can do is simply have a catch in here. So let's do catch and I'm not going to worry about error handling in at the moment, so I'm going to simply reject it. And whenever uh, it gets rejected by any reason, we are going to uh, trigger this catch reject, which will then trigger this catch and set the request running to false. Okay, so now let's give it a try. Come in here, open the, this one video, and do subscribe to SimCoder yet again, and let's see how this one turns out. So you'll probably see a bunch of uh, warnings appearing. This is due to Firebase and there's nothing that we can do about this. It is a common error with Firebase. And let's wait for the response to reach our database. Okay, so it returned to the previous screen, which is awesome, but let's give it a quick reload to see if uh, it gets populated with the post. And we see a post, we see an ID, and we see all of the data that comes with it. So we see the description, we see the creator, we see the creation date, and the other uh, parameters that we get in here. But let's see if this download URL is correct. First of all, let's go into storage, go into posts, and we see that we get the, use, the current logged in user's ID folder inside posts. Then by going in it, we see that a big string is created, and I, I told you that it was like 16 characters. It is even more than that by the looks of it. So uh, it is really hard to for a user to be as unlucky to replace a file with another file which has the same uh, ID. So there's nothing to worry about there, obviously, because this is a proof of concept, uh, mostly. Okay, so now that we have in here, we are able to see the public download URL in this name. So let's open it up. And by opening it up, we see that the video that I uploaded with the start of TikTok, the first video on TikTok, then we are able to actually use it. Okay, so, and if we come in here and grab this download URL, it will be the exact same. So we are able to simply play it. So it is working. We are now uploading videos to our um, Firebase storage and making an entry for it in Firestore. So it is working just fine. Awesome. So thank you all so much for watching. We are now able to save posts and the next part is obviously to display them. So uh, the next videos should be interesting as well. If you enjoyed this video, then please do leave it a like, subscribe, and again, hit the notification bell. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Ciao!